You see, while, while there's still hope for Newcastle yep. because of the wealth, yep. the newfound wealth, and yep. they'll probably flash the cash at the end of January or in January mm -hmm. uh, to try and dig themselves out of the trouble they're in. It is viewed, is it not, Simon, that, that, that Norwich's predicament is virtually terminal? Uh, it has been, and I've been one of those people um, observing and opining upon that because up until the point where they beat Brentford, they were shocking, shocking in most games across the board. <clears throat> and it gave very little indication that there was going to be anything from that group of players. It was universally analysed by a variety of voices that the squad wasn't good enough, the recruitment policy hadn't been good enough. There were some misrepresentations about how much Norwich had had spent this season against previous seasons because it started with the narrative being Norwich have come into the Premier League yet again and not had a go. So that built up a momentum. The team's performances um, created another string to that particular narrative and of course it then built up a backdrop of people saying yeah. this is a team that's, that's done and dusted. I think Daniel Farker had just lost his way and it happens at times where managers' voices become, you know, superfluous requirements. They don't have the zeitgeist on the same group of players that were once successful for them and no longer responding to them. Yeah. Dean Smith's come in there. It's a sensible appointment and is a sensible manager. I, I, I observed, I was, I, didn't, I was worried for Dean Smith that he wouldn't get another Premier League job and I didn't see the left field appointment of Norwich. He's got that job. He's done a decent job. I still think, on the balance of probability, Norwich will get relegated. I think they might make a bit more of a fist of it now because they've changed the mechanics of the coaching staff. It'll be interesting to see if they can change up a gear in January. Well, there's time yet, Simon. Th there's time. I mean, specifically, what do you base that on? That they'll go down? I don't think they've got enough goals in them. I think Pukki needs a lot of chances to score goals. I don't think there's enough quality around the pitch. I think defensively, they're a little bit off. But I think Dean Smith will add some stability to that. And I know his, his observation is right, because if you look at previous times when QPR tried to buy themselves out of trouble um, at times when oh, they were in the relegation disaster. zone, yeah. and Fulham have done the same thing and it's yeah. not worked, yeah. I just wonder, with the the level of resource that Newcastle have got, the scale of that club, I, I still feel that there's a distinct possibility that Newcastle may find their way through this because they have got goals in that side. If they can keep Callum Wilson fit, yeah. if they can keep Alan Maximum going at full tilt, if they can get a tune out of Joe Willock. It's if, if, if though, isn't well, it? it? But th these things are there in the building. Yeah. So that comes down to Eddie Howe, his coaching staff and an element of luck. And if they can supplement with some decent signings, you know, that... that address the issue that Newcastle sure. have which is the inability to defend I still think if you look at it Newcastle have got six points they've drawn six games so 50% of the games they've been involved in they've been in the game right. they really should have beaten Brighton yeah, yeah, so yeah. I don't think it's a lost cause of Newcastle well it's an early kick off it's 7.30 tonight for Newcastle against uh, Norwich the thing of it is this Simon Newcastle are well aware they could enter ominous company tonight only three clubs have ever failed to win in any of their first 14 in a season and all three suffered relegation that uh, that campaign Swindon 93-94 QPR you mentioned yeah. them 2012-13 and Sheffield United 2020-21 yeah. so they don't want to get involved in that company but at the same time even with the super wealthy owners in Eddie Howe can't turn his attention to transfers and January at the moment in terms of recruitment maybe can't maybe won't this was Eddie I think January will come at a later date that's not to say that we're not going to give that our full focus but at the moment my only focus is on Norwich um, and Burnley uh, on the horizon a lot of games to come Jim so my focus is on the players that we do have not the players that um, we may recruit in January I mean the the next few games I think will shape Eddie and Newcastle's policy in that January window won't it um, it, it could become well, a lost cause, Simon. Well, well, yes and no. I mean, I, I mean, ultimately, we've looked at the run of fixtures they've got, and because the run of fixtures past the next two games, which are which are Norwich and Burnley, um, are very challenging fixtures. You may well be right, but they've still got 19, 20 games to play after this run of fixtures, and they still have the ability to be able to influence their own destiny in January. So. Football managers will, will, will can multitask. The nonsense that he's saying to you that he's not looking at that particular perspective will be nonsense because he'll have looked at it before he walks in the door because ultimately his job was to keep Newcastle in the Premier League if he possibly can. So he would have done his due diligence. He'll looked around. He'll know who he potentially wants to buy. Yeah. Or I would think he wants to. And, and of course, people in most walks of life that are supposed to be talented can multitask. So he'll be looking at the here and now and also the requirements in four weeks' time for the opening of the January transfer. 
transfer window and the two or three games that they have in January. Yeah. So with that in mind, yeah, of course, it's going to make it a difficult perspective. But when you get into January, the season ain't done. They're still going to have 19 games. So irrespective of they don't pick up another point between now and and the 1st of January, they still have 19 or 18 games sure. to participate in with 54 points available that they'll want to go for. So I still think they'll buy um, significant players in January to be able to supplement either staying in the division or going down with a real fight so they can bounce back up the what following season. What a story Newcastle United has become, hasn't it? What a story it's become. I mean, the people at the top, super wealthy. Yeah. The club and the players at the moment looking at going down I mean it's a hell of a story it really is and they don't want to enter uh, this ominous company tonight because only three clubs have said it have been there before failing to win any of the first 14 and that could apply you might have to add Newcastle to that sorry list uh, tonight Jim White and Simon Jordan Monday to Thursday morning 10 till 1 on AM on DAB via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker Talk Sport.